Once there was a preacher by the name of Ted Haggard Who stumbled from the path, or you might even say staggered He was one in a million, or more aptly one in ten Some folks say he put the men in awe He preached the gospel message of intolerance and self-loathing And traveled on his wayward way, betraying his betrothing He was the soul of piety and no one doubted him Until he hired a gigolo and used a pseudonym So he humbly went to counseling and then Three weeks later he's born again, again Because Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual Ted Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. We are live at a Sunday, June 1st, 2008. Uh, that was Ted Haggard is completely that governmental heterosexual. Uh, validation is, is so crucial to them. I think it's just some kind of a way of, of you know, wanting to sort of rub it in everyone's else, every, everyone else's noses. And it, has to, it comes down to this sort of mob rule concept that they have of what democracy is. And I, think it's, I think it's different. Yeah, you, th you do. I think it's yeah. fear. I think that uh, among the bulk of Especially, and I don't want to just label it Christians, but let's face it, we live in the United States, we're 75-80% Christian. The people who are doing these things... And, are and the putting, Christians. So, it's yeah. the Christians that want God on our money and God up all over the place. Um, I think it's, it's fear-based. I think that they've noticed that, um, well, first of all, they have delusions and misperceptions about what this country was founded on. Well, sure. Um, yeah. we, we've gone through the myth of a Christian nation about a billion times on the show. And again, it's a, it was the, the whole mob rule concept of yeah. what they think democracy means, where it's, well, if the majority wants it, then that's the way it is. It's like, no, no. The way our democracy works in America is we have this document called the Constitution, whereas, you know, it respects what the majority may want, but at the same time, whatever majority decision is made, there are protections yeah. for the minorities in place as, you know, that, that allow everyone to sort of, you know, all of us to try to kind of get along. You know, if democracy is just two wolves and a sheep trying to decide what's for dinner, in our culture, the Constitution is the document that says it ain't going to be the sheep. Right. And Everybody gets to vote, but you can't, you know, and that's no matter how, how the vote comes out, the sheep doesn't get eaten. And that is, is something that uh, the conservative Christians don't really seem to grok, you know, this whole idea of, well, you know, we're the majority, and so, you know, you just need to kind of, you know, uh, be tolerant of us. That's yeah. the funny thing, is that they think that it's intolerance towards them. Right. Uh, but at the same time, they want to be the majority. And, so. and you know, one thing that, they, that this comes out of, and it kind of gets back to the fear, that they don't realize, first of all, that one of the reasons we have the, the church-state separation protections in the First Amendment is specifically because some Protestants got together in Virginia and said, whoa, 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 we don't want the state supporting these other religions mm -hmm. that we don't like, and we're, we're the minority here. Our, we need something that's going to protect our rights. So let's just make sure that the, the, the religion stays out of the church, church stays out of the, well, religion stays out of the state, state stays out of religion, that way we're all free to practice whatever. And now that these same individuals, or these same groups, I mean, obviously the individuals are dead, but the same groups have gotten to uh, a point where they have a, a good power base, mm -hmm. now they're just disregarding what, what their, their founding fathers said. Um, and they're trying to reverse it. And I think it's out of fear because they noticed, as, as Governor Rick Perry here in Texas, uh, he went on the 700 Club to say that secularism is a virus that's destroying the country. And this type of message has been beaten into the head of some extreme right Christian conservatives who, rather than investigating or knowing anything about history or what's really going on, think, oh my gosh, the atheists are kind of, you know, they, took, the path, they took prayer out of school. No, they didn't. They took state-led prayer out of school. Your kid can still pray before any test that yeah, they didn't that's, study for. that's the distinction that, uh, that they just can't grasp. Yeah. I mean, it's like it is 150% legal for any student in any public school in America at this moment to drop to his knees and pray until he's blue in the face. No well, one dropping to knees may be a problem because if he's in a classroom, it could be a disruption. Okay, dropping to knees, oh, but by your lockers, you know, they're not yeah. going to stop you. But you can pray and you can have, and oh, by the way, there are Youth for Christ groups. Yeah. As if the Young problem. life and all the rest of those. I mean, they can do that kind of stuff. You can take your Bible to school and, you know, read it in the lunchroom. No yeah. one's going to, you know, and... And, uh, and I don't want them to stop you from doing yeah. that. Never have. But it's this whole idea of the school itself as a government-sponsored body 
sitting everyone down and dictating a prayer to say, well, now, now whose prayer is it going to be? Is it going to be a Methodist prayer? Is it going to be a Presbyterian prayer? Yeah. Is it going to be some sort of Catholic uh, mass? I mean, you have what to are remember, we going to have? Yeah. yeah, it was first period. You come in, you mm -hmm. say the Pledge of Allegiance, which we modify to stick in God. Uh, under God right uh, before the word indivisible, thereby yeah. creating the most ironic change in history. <laughs> um, and then you go on to do a Bible reading and a prayer. That's what was gotten rid of. They didn't take yeah. God out of school. They didn't take prayer out of school. And as I mentioned today during the lecture, I'm actually an advocate of, uh, of comparative religion courses, Bibles, literature courses, all of these other electives that allow uh, kids to learn about culture. But then, but then, you know, how in the hell in this culture are you going to get any of those kinds of elective courses that aren't uh, coming prepackaged with some sort of, um, you know, ideological agenda behind Easy. them? Easy. Yeah. Atheists approve the, agenda, uh, the <laughs> curriculum and teach the courses. I mentioned it this morning. That'll happen. I guarantee you that I will not be proselytizing Christianity when I teach your kids about the Bible. And I'll also promise that I'm not just going to pick out the bad parts, just as long as we can both agree that the bad parts exist. You can read all the sexy bits in Song of Solomon. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's kind of the fun. Or the gross things about spreading dung on your face. a preacher by the name of Ted Haggard Who stumbled from the path, or you might even say staggered He was one in a million, or more aptly one in ten some folks say he put the men in awe, oh, man.